out DCS crew, it's Carlos back at it, this time with a Chinese knife maker whose name is synonymous with a 2011 movie starring Hugh Jackman as a former prize fighter who controls a robot boxer named Adam. And that's, you guessed it, Real Steel. Now this isn't about the movie, rather I'm going to be talking about the context of this box right here, and that's the G5 Metamorph. Um, so if you are new to the front flipper game and you want to try out one... Uh, you know, without breaking the bank, this is the knife for you. So sure, there are other choices, but they're pretty limited until you start to look way above what this particular knife costs. Now, let me just get this box opened, take out the knife, get it out of the way, you know, yada, yada. Go ahead and set this here. Close this all nicely because, you know, while you know about all the stuff that comes in here, you know, instructions, a little cleaning cloth, you know, that sort of thing, what you really want to know is about this guy. So let's go ahead and get to business, shall we? Okay. So let's start to um, talk about the basics about the knife. Okay. The Metamorph is dubbed the G5 as it's part of Real Steel's Gentleman Class Designs and it's geared towards office and executive carry. Um, you know, it's something you can EDC while you're out on the streets, but the truth is something like this is really geared more towards, you know, the white collar worker or actually, you know, the blue collar worker, the executive or somebody that is more in an office type setting. Uh, so it appealed to me because, you know, I, I do work in an office and I want something that's relatively slim and uh, easy to go ahead and use, uh, you know, take out open little things here and there. So um, the knife's design was... Uh, done by Ostop Hell, who wanted to create something uh, thin, slicey, and, and accessible to pretty much an untapped market, if you think about it. Um, and to be honest, it's a smart move since there's so few front flippers under $100 that this definitely gets noticed. Um, <clears throat> so let's go on to the specs since that's what you know a lot of people really want to know. This is the soft gray version, and I'll go ahead and show it up close here. This is G5 Metamorph. Uh, the all stop pelt design with 14C28 and steel. It has the real steel insignia on this side. Now, um, the handles and the back spacers are um, Alu 7075. Uh, let me see if I said that correctly. Yeah, it's Alu 7075, which between us, if you haven't guessed already, it's kind of like how they, uh, knife companies treat, you know, polymer or plastic and stuff like that. It's just, to me, it's a fancy name for uh, treated aluminum. When open, the knife is just over 8.1 inches in length with a blade slightly over three and a half inches. And now let me just go ahead and take out the scale. Okay, so you can see what the weight is. And as per, per the, uh, the website and the box that it came in, this should actually come in at about 2.65 ounces. So put that there. 2.61. Try this again. Up, oh, 6.5, 6.1. Okay. All right, one more time. Okay, 2.65, exactly as it stated on the, uh, the, the box itself, on the manufacturer's box. So, okay, that's pretty interesting. That was kind of weird what happened with the, uh, with the, the scale, but we'll go ahead and go with it. All right, now, um, Okay, let me go put this scale back. Now there are a few knives to compare it with, uh, you know, dimension wise. And let me go ahead and open this again here. And I'll start with another EDC knife that I've been using. That's been really fun. It's been the uh, Tangram Vector. This is uh, Kaiser's value line. I'm gonna go ahead and put this just above so you can see from the handle to the blade how that looks okay as you can see it's significantly bigger than the tangram vector and okay here we have the Kershaw link this is the plain edge and 420 high carbon steel go ahead and line up the scales and the blades so it's just slightly larger if you can see I can pretty much get a finger here a fat finger and that's the difference between the Link and the Metamorph. The scales are actually pretty similar. And then obviously, you know, something that should be uh, a stalwart in any EDC collection, we have the Spyderco Delica. 
Now this is the brown FRN version with an MXG deep carry clip. Great, great setup in VG10 steel. Uh, nice thin blade profile, excellent slicer. Oh, let me go ahead and see if I can straighten that out so you can see, line that up by the pivot hole. There we go. And then you can see what the size differences are. As you can see, um, smallest, medium, and largest, and uh, nice thin uh, blades. You go ahead and check the thickness between the two. As you can see, the metamorph is significantly thicker at the spine, has a nice thin edge, although not nearly as thin as the Delica. So you're gonna get some nice slicey tasks, but uh, if you're looking for that very, very paper thin edge, you're not exactly gonna find it with this unless it's reground, and uh, you can choose to do that if you want. I have a KME and I can do that. Uh, or if you have a weighted edge, but it's not really something you can do with mo uh, most other systems, so. Um, okay, now, all right, I, I feel that there's a few things I like to talk about um, about this knife. There's a few things I like, and there's a few things that I feel that needs work, so let's get right to it. Now, one thing I really like about the knife is the, just the overall profile. It's, uh, I like how sleek and refined the, the design actually is. You know, O-Stop and Real Steel really made a visually appealing knife with, uh, you know, a decent blade steel and bearings under 75 bucks. And while this is sort of the, you know, the, the standard version is the soft gray, you can also pick it up in either blue, rose gold, or a special edition in either, um, uh, excuse me, in green exclusive to Battle Box. I like how they used a 14C28N steel uh, from Sandvik on this one instead of going cheap uh, and picking up some 8CR13 MOV, you know, or Taiwanese OS 8, uh, you know, to keep it cheap or to actually start it at a much higher price point by choosing VG10 like that of the Spider Code Delica. Xnix N690CO would have been another um, option as well, but um, since they already have an existing relationship with Sandvik um, instead of Boulder. I figured that, okay, well, it's worth it to just go ahead and stay with the 14C28N. And it's not bad because if you heat treat this correctly, this can actually perform as well or uh, better than your standard VG10 steel. So it's nothing to scoff at. I mean, you know, it's something that Kershaw was using in their USA made knives like the Blur or the, um, the Leak, if I'm not mistaken, also had that and uh, the, the Kershaw knockout. So um, it is a good steel. It's touted and it's, it's world renowned for, you know, good rust corrosion uh, resistance and uh, it can take a really good edge. And with the right heat treatment, like I said before, it can keep it. So um, the liner lock, that's another thing that I wanted to go ahead and talk about. The liner lock here, the way that it's, uh, th that this is constructed, um, you have nice even sides on, on both, you know, the left and the right scales. So you have access you know, to the liner lock very easily. As you can see, it doesn't jut out too much, but it's got a nice little bit of jimping here. Let me go ahead and see if I can show that to you a little bit better. There you go. And it juts out ever so slightly. So you're gonna have the ability to pick this up. You know, it's nice and tactile. It's not too much and you can just go ahead and, you know, actuate it. However you choose. And now as you can see the lock up, I'll go ahead and show that to you. Lock up on mine, and a nice 360 look here of the handle, okay? Now, oh man, where was I? I'm lost in my thoughts and my dog is playing in the background, so my bad. Um, so, you know, I, I'm, I'm used to flipper knives in my pocket, and I gotta admit, this feels like a pen when I reach for it ever since I started using it because there isn't a flipper tap to look at me, you know, to poke at me like at some other knives. I mean, you know, you have stuff like the Kershaw Link, for example. This has, uh, you know, the pocket packer, but it's angled in such a way that when you reach into the pocket, this doesn't come out. Um, I actually did a uh, project recently on um, the Kaiser Dukes because while it's a fantastic knife from Kaiser and it sports some VG10 that is actually some of the best VG10 I've actually ever owned. Um, it has a pocket pecker like no other. I mean, it has a nose like Barbra Streisand. And MIA Blade Works was willing to go ahead and help me out with that on that project. So um, they reduced, they actually did a flipper tab um, reduction 
Uh, and if I were you, I'd go ahead and check that video. I'm gonna go ahead and put that down in the comments and feel free to go ahead and check that out. But um, now, one thing I also really like about this um, is, you know, as I stated before, this knife is geared towards light use, office carry EDC, and for simple opening of, you know, letters, bags, boxes, stuff like that, uh, you know, you have got yourself right here. Once you get used to it, you got a fit. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna try and say this right. You've got a fidget friendly front flipper. Fidget friendly front flipper. The fidget friendly front flipper. And no, I do not plan on saying that five times fast, so I'm just gonna leave it at that. <laughs> the, the scales themselves, you know, they're, they're smooth aluminum so that it slips in and out of your pocket easily without ruining your work slacks. And in all honesty, at first glance, I thought this thing here on the uh, logo was a QR code. I wouldn't show that here. But if you get closer and you look even closer, you can see that it actually says RSK, which is short for Real Steel Knives. Yeah, I had a blonde moment there. So, you know, so sue me. Um, oh, and the backspacer has been milled out on the sides for almost a, uh, a semi-custom look with the bottom portion of the handle actually set up to accept a lanyard for those who use it. Now I don't, and I'm not gonna use it on something like, especially like this, because it's gonna be very easy to take out of the pocket, and I'll explain why in a second. Now, there are a few things I feel need work, and I'll go ahead and get those out of the way, starting with the way you open this knife. There is going to be a learning curve when you use a front flipper, and this knife is no exception, although it is actually pretty smooth. Um, nothing makes you look like an idiot more than when you try and take this out, and you just can't seem to flick it open on the first try. So take some time and get used to the fact that this isn't meant to be a tactical flat, fast flipper and you should be okay. Uh, another issue is that they didn't tap the scales for left-handed carry. I don't know if you see that here. Um, and while it's usually not a big deal, when you have a front flipper knife that's already appealing to a specific market, you're cutting even more potential buyers out of the market by tapping the knife for only right hand carry. And speaking of the clip, if you happen to like your knives to not stick out at least an inch or more from your pocket, then you're not going to like this clip design. Add to the fact that the scales are really smooth and you can potentially find this uh, falling out of your pocket if you're not careful. So. So at the end of the day, you know, like I said before, this knife was made for an extremely particular market. And if you fall within that target audience and are on the fence about picking one up, these are priced to where it's worth just taking the plunge and buying one. I mean, you know, go ahead and pick one up. These are priced to where, you know, they're, they're good to go. And the market is actually good enough for these that you can go ahead and sell it on a secondary market. You can go on Instagram, you can go on, you know, one of the Instagram, uh, excuse me, the Facebook knife groups or, you know, Reddit, and you can go ahead and put it out for raffle or, or swap it out for somebody that's interested in trading. So, and again, while this is the soft gray version, it's got this kind of like semi shiny uh, look to it, which is, I think is really sharp. Um, I've also seen the blue one that looks fantastic. They have a rose gold one that's actually really nice. Um, and if you subscribe to BattleBox, or if you go, I think they have it on Amazon now, um, that BattleBox went ahead and provided to them, um, you can pick up their exclusive green version. And that one actually looks really cool. So, you know, it's, it's a nice piece worth picking up from, you know, real steel. And the action is a lot better than the Kaiser Feist that I own. And that knife comes in at close to double the price of the Metamorph. Likely because of the fact that it has, you know, it swaps the scales from, uh, you know, aluminum to titanium, and then you go from 14C28N to s 35 vn steel. In any case, feel free to go ahead and send me a message with any questions that you may have uh, via my contact page at dailycarrysolutions.com or simply comment on this video right down below if you'd like. Uh, be sure to subscribe for updates and follow me on Instagram at dailycarrysolutions. And... You know, just remember that no matter what you choose for your day, everyday carry needs, doesn't matter if it's the Delica, doesn't matter if it's the Link, doesn't matter if it's the Tangram Vector, maybe even the Metamorph, maybe you choose to go ahead and pick it up. Remember, if you EDC, make a DCS. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you all next time. Take it easy. Take care, everybody.